going to review mugging with muscles, the facial muscles. The first one I'm going to talk about is the orbicularis oculi, which is right around the eye. And it's the one that we basically use to wink. It closes the eye. Its origin is the maxilla right here and the frontal bone in this area. And its insertion is the dermis near its origin. The second muscle that we're going to have is the nasalis muscle and we got the nasalis muscle right here and it comes in right here these two areas here so it's basically right on the nose and its point of origin is the maxilla its uh, insertion point is the bridge and the ala of the nose its action is to pull the nasal wings down and back so it does a little bit like this Procaris is essentially in the midline and the bridge of the nose. Its point of origin is the bridge of the nose and its insertion it goes into the frontalis muscle which is up here. So it's essentially just a continuation of the frontalis muscle as we get into the nasal area in the area of the glabella. Procaris makes transverse folds across the nose and across the eye. If we raise one upper lip so elevates an upper lip. We're looking at the levator labi superioris group. So that's this one right here. As a point of origin is the infraorbital margin, right in this area. And in terms of the insertion, it is the skin of the upper lip. We're gonna have two muscles that help us frowning, which here essentially means bring the lower lips down like this. This is the depressor labia inferioris muscle, and that is from the mandible, it goes into the skin of the lower lip. And then we have the depressor anguli oris muscle, and that also starts at the, the bottom of the um, mandible, and it goes into the corner of the mouth, and it brings the corner of the mouth down. Um, flatten the cheek and make the mouth wide is the buccinator muscle and that is deep in here. It is not the more superficial one that's also across, which is the rhizorius muscle. It's the deep muscle, deep cheek muscle and we call it the buccinator. Keeps your lips closed while you make your mouth wide like this. We have three muscles that we want to have us help smile. We have the zygomatica major and minor muscle, which is called the zygomatic, and we have the rhizorius. The zygomatic muscle starts at the zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone, right here, and it goes into the corner of the, of the mouth, and it lifts the corner of the mouth. And the rhizorius muscle goes mainly into the masseter or starts at the masseter as its origin and inserts also into the corner of the mouth. And it sort of helps us to smile making a wide upper smile. Then we want to open our eyes wide just such as regular open and then wide open. Regular open or close and then wide open. We're going to look into the levator palpebrae superioris muscle. If I label that, it's labeled right here on top of the eye. And that starts actually at the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone in the, in the back of the orbit and it goes into the eyelid and it, it, it inserts all the way in the eyelid. So it brings the eyelid up. A muscle that helps us raise and lower the eyebrows, it goes like that, is the frontalis muscle. We can also call it the occipital frontalis because it originates at the epicranial aponeurosis, which is this white part here. And it inserts in the skin near the eyebrows as well as the nose area. Go for chewing for a moment. We have four muscles that are important in opening and closing the jaw. We have a masseter muscle, which is massive, which is right here. And the masseter muscle uh, originates in the zygomatic arch up in this area and also the maxilla which is the upper jawbone 
and it inserts in the corner or the angle of the mandibular ramus and it's a very very strong closer of the jaw. The second muscle we're going to look at is the temporalis muscle right in here behind or on top of the ear sort of and you can feel that when you touch there right here and you clench your, your, your teeth and it bulges out a little bit so that's how you know where you're at. And that muscle originates in the temporal fossa, which is between the superior and inferior temporal line. And it, um, it inserts in the coronoid process of the mandible. That muscle is the medial pterygoid muscle. And that is right here. And that muscle starts, it originates at the, at the medial side of the lateral pterygoid, which we talked about in the bone, in the skull. And we have that in the review video there. And it inserts in the underside of the angle of the mandible. So that is the medial pterygoid, and the medial pterygoid hold, helps close the jaw. Then we have the lateral pterygoid, which starts at the lateral side of the lateral pterygoid and it inserts into the mandibular condyle right there. This one opens the jaw. I want to talk about. One is the one, the round one around the mouth and that says oh and that muscle is the orbicularis oris muscle. As a point of origin it is the mandible and the maxilla and the point of insertion is the fascia of the lip. muscle. Its origin is the mandible near the incisors. Mandible near the incisors where the chin are or the, 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 the teeth are. And it goes into the skin of the chin. And it wrinkles the chin. It does also protrude the lower lip a little bit. Two muscles in the tongue that I like to talk about. One of the muscles is the genioglossus muscle. And that's right here. The genioglossus muscle starts um, at the mandible. Right here you can see the mandible is cut. And then it actually inserts in the tongue itself. And that muscle is responsible for protruding the tongue, sticking the tongue out. We're not going to have to do the that. Styloglossus model. Glossus referring to tongue, stylo referring to the stylet process. We can imagine the stylet process oops, being back here. And the tongue in here, what that muscle does, it retracts the tongue. It pulls it. One is not on the model, but we can see it on one's own skin, on the neck, in the front, and you tighten the neck, that very thin sheet of muscle on top, or just underneath the skin, is called the platysma. It goes from the fascia of the chest, and it inserts sort of in the lower area of the mandible. The sternocleidomastoid muscle, and that's right here. It's very massive. It goes from the sternum, the clavicle, into the mastoid process. The sternocleidomastoid muscle can be seen when we oppose its motion, which is turning the head and laterally flexing the head. So turning the head to a side and side bending it, and then it sticks out and it's right here. And so we can see it going from the, sternal, the sternum and a clavicle into the mastoid process.